Hey, what's up folks? We got another cool project today. Uh, you'll see we have this little surf image gallery over here on the left, or maybe it's my right, or I don't know which side it's on. But the basic idea is we have some images that are just crossfading, okay? Now, although it's a fairly basic exercise, um, I'm gonna be showing you some workflow tips that are gonna be really important moving forward so that we can sort of batch our animations and not build them all out one by one, all right? I've got a list of uh, stuff I wanna discuss with you and I didn't want to memorize it or comb my hair, so let me just read it off to you real quick, all right? We're gonna show you how to show and hide layers, really important. We're gonna add keyframes to multiple layers, and we're gonna create classic tweens on multiple objects on multiple layers all at the same time. It's awesome. And we're gonna show you how to move spans of frames back and forth and use my F5 magic so that we can add and remove frames from a single layer or multiple layers, all right? So there's a lot to go over here, and I think you're really going to enjoy these sort of enhanced workflow tips that you're gonna be learning that will be applying pretty much all throughout this course, all right? So let's get in there. All right, so here I have my surf gallery start file opened up, and you'll see that we have a blank keyframe down here in layer one, and not much to see. However, in the library, you'll see that I do have a series of assets here. Now, for this exercise, we're not gonna worry about how these assets got in here or how we created these different symbols, okay? We'll get into that in much more detail later on, but for now, I wanna keep the momentum that we have with learning the basics of animation, all right? Trust me, you're going to learn everything you're going to need to know about symbols. What's important here is that I want to be using the assets that have this gear icon, okay? Those are movie clip symbols, and where we see the .png extension, those are the raw images that we brought in. The short story is we need to be animating things that are symbols and not things that are PNGs. So let's just focus on the first image right now, all right? I don't want you following along because I'm going to undo pretty much everything I do but let's just start animating the first symbol as a refresher. So I'm going to take this symbol out of the library, place it on the stage, and I wanna have it pixel perfect aligned. So what I like doing is opening up my align panel. I can use the icon here, or I can do command K, which I recommend you memorize, and making sure that the image is selected and highlighted, and we have align to stage selected, will align to the left edge and the top edge. So now I know it's exactly where it needs to be. Now, this is a symbol. On frame one, what I want to do is to start with an opacity of zero and then fade in. And the way I approach something like this is that I will go to frame 10 and I'm going to add my ending keyframe and I'm going to press F6. All right, we've talked enough about keyframes and what they are. So here we have our new keyframe. I'm gonna go back to frame number one I'm gonna select the image, go to the properties panel, and I'm gonna set the alpha down to zero. All right, it remembers the last time I set it down to zero. Remember at 100%, we can see it fully, and at alpha of zero, it's faded out. Now I have my starting keyframe and my ending keyframe in frame number 10, and I'm just going to right click anywhere here and say create classic tween. So now I have this image fading in nicely. Now let's say I wanna do the second image. Well, we learned in the previous exercise that we need a new layer every time we wanna animate something new. So I would go down to the bottom here and click on add new layer. And maybe I wanna add the new image, it's frames 30 or so. So I might click out here. I might hit F6 to add a keyframe there so that I extend my timeline out. And now I have a blank keyframe there. I'm gonna to go to my library panel I'll take surf two out. Remember, we're not doing the PNGs, we're doing the movie clip symbols that we see here. I place it on the stage, again, go to my align panel, boom, boom, and get it where it wanna be. And I would also say, hey, let's go to frame 40, F6 to add a new keyframe, go back to frame number one, go to the properties panel, go style, alpha, bring it down to zero, right click, create classic tween. Now, although I can do that fast and it looks cool, you know what? If I gotta do three or four images or 10 images, it's gonna take a lot of time to do all these steps. It's gonna be repetitive and it's gonna get really boring really quick. So what I'm going to do is show you how I can do the same animation on all four images at once. But before I do that, I wanna just illustrate something that happened while I was adding the second animation. Let's go back to frame number one. 
and you'll see that we have our first image fade in as we expect. But check out these frames down here in frame number, layer number one, I should say. Remember they're that alternating light and dark gray pattern. That means they're potential frames. So I never added more frames to the first layer. So when I scrub over to the next few frames, notice that everything just goes blank again, okay? So in layer number one, after this keyframe here, I have nothing else to see. And then very slowly as I get to frame 30, you will see that we then fade in. So the idea wasn't to have this thing just fade away and then just disappear before the next image comes in. I wanted this second image to cross fade on top of the image in layer one. Now, we got to think, all right, we know that we can't see anything in layer one because there's no frames there. So what we're going to need to do is go to frame number 40 in layer one. And by hitting, remember, I tried to hammer these keyframe shortcuts into you or these frame shortcuts. Remember F5. There we go. We're now adding frames and they're all solid light gray. We'll go back to frame number one. And when I scrub forward, you'll see now that in this span here, that the image doesn't go away, but in frame 30, the next image starts fading in on top of it. So we have this pretty cool animation now, two images cross fading, but I gotta do the third and fourth image. And I don't wanna have to repeat these same steps over and over again. If I had 10 images, it would drive me nuts. So let's talk about how we can sort of optimize our workflow here. So first what I'm gonna do is take you to undo school. What's that? It's when I jam on Command Z or Control Z and go back to where my file was when we first started out. So let's do all that. Come on, undo, 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 undo. And we're just about to graduate from undo school. All right, let's get rid of that image actually too. So come on, there we go. So everything's off the stage. We have a blank keyframe. I'm gonna go over to the library and I'm going to take surf one. Remember, no PNG extension. I can grab it by its name here in the library. I can grab surf two and place it on the stage. Or if I have like Surf 3 selected, I can grab the preview and drag it onto the stage. And for Surf 4, I can either take it from the list or from the preview. So I've purposely put everything on the stage very messy. Now, what I'm gonna do is select everything and align them all the same exact way. They're all right now in layer one. So there's a few ways that I can select all of these elements. I can click and drag and just sort of hope that I select everything. When I click off, I deselect. Um, I can go to edit, select all, or there's a command A shortcut for that as well. But something I want you to know is that if I click on the frame, it's also going to allow me to select everything. So all of these pictures will be highlighted in blue. Now that I have them all highlighted, I can go to the Align panel. I can open that with Command K. And making sure I have Align to Stage selected, I'm gonna click on the left side and the top side. All right, so I'm aligning to the left and the top. And now they're all in the same layer in the exact same place. I just clicked off of the Align panel to close it. So they're all perfectly aligned, sitting on top of each other. Now, I've told you before that when we animate things again, we need to have them all in their own layer. So check this out. I'm gonna click on the frame again to select everything. And then I'm gonna right click and say, distribute to layers, shift command D on the Mac and check out what happens. Animate builds layers for me that all have the name that corresponds to that symbol, all right? I'm gonna get rid of layer one because now it's blank and there's nothing in it. So I'm gonna select that layer and delete it. And if I wanna see what's beneath things in the Surf 4 layer, check this out. I have this little eye here. I'm going to hide what's in the Surf 4 layer so I can see Surf 3. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So if I wanna see what's in the first layer, I can just hide these layers. Um, what's neat about this with the eye is that if I hold down option or alt on the PC and click on a layer, it's going to toggle everything else off, okay? So right now, um, I'm only seeing the surf layer two and it's hidden all the other layers. If I option click on surf four, it's gonna hide everything else. So this is a really neat and handy trick if you ever wanna see what's in a layer, a specific layer and nothing else. If I wanna see only what's in surf layer one, option click, 
and now I'm seeing just that picture and I can click and drag to show everything. If I want to hide all layers, I can click on the eye and hide them all or show them all. So learning something new here and there as we move along. So the point here is that we have everything in its own layer. They're all symbols and all the layers got labeled or named properly when I did distribute two layers. Now what I'm going to do is create the ending keyframes in all the layers at the same time. So I'm gonna to go to frame number 10, I'm gonna click and drag down so that highlights all of frame 10 in all of the layers and I'm going to hit F6 to insert my keyframes. So now I have new keyframes in every layer and check this out. I'm gonna go back to frame one and I'm going to do, I can select all those frames and that's gonna select everything in all those frames. Now watch this, I'm gonna to go to properties and I'm gonna say, hey, you know what, oops, that selected all the frames, all right? Even though that stuff is highlighted, the properties panel is showing me frame properties. So let me just very quickly drag a marquee over the entire stage and now we're going to be selecting multiple movie clips and I'm going to say that your style or your alpha is going to be down to zero. So in frame one, everything is transparent and in frame 10, everything's visible. I'm gonna go back to frame number one and check this out now. Click and drag down to select frame one in multiple layers, right click on any frame and do create classic tween. Now they're all animating in at the same time. Pretty cool. So what I can do now is move these frame spans out so we have sort of a staggered animation. So to do that, I'm gonna click and drag to select that frame span I'm going to release my mouse and then I'm going to click and drag that selection and I'll have it start somewhere around frame number 30. I'm then going to take the surf 3 layer, click, hold down and drag, release, and then now I can move that entire span and I'll have that one start, that one ends around 40, we'll have this one start at 70, so we have about 30 frames in between. And then lastly, I'm gonna go back to the Surf 4 layer. Click, hold down, drag to select those layers. And we're going to then move this frame span all the way down to, let's say it ends at 80. We'll start this one here at 110. All right, so now we have the staggered animation and let me play it through. Fade in, fade in, disappear, fade in, disappear. All right, so we have these fade in animations staggered nicely, but we have that same issue we faced back in the uh, my first demo, remember? Um, in all these layers, once this frame span here ends, we now have these potential frames, all right? We never added more frames to these layers. So here's another little trick. We'll go down to the end. Let me just scroll back just a little bit. And I'm going to go out to say, frame number 150, and I'm gonna click and drag down to select multiple frames and multiple layers, and by hitting F5, I'm going to add frames to all those layers. When I go back to the beginning, check it out, now when I play, the image comes in and stays, and then the next one fades in on top. So in just a few moments, we have here a really nice and cool little image gallery. We did multiple animations on multiple objects at the same time. Now before I go, I just want to show you that I just realized I made a little error here, okay? So I want you to see that when the first image ends at frame number 10, the next image starts at frame 30. So that gives us a gap of about 20 frames, right? But I really wanted this distance here to be 30 frames, which would be one second of time to see the image fully on the screen. If you look at when the second image comes in, you'll see that we go from roughly frame 39 to frame 70. So here we have a span of about 30 frames or a full second. So the issue now is, well, how do I increase the amount of time between frame 10 and frame 30? I gotta push this stuff over. Well, I could take all these frames 
and move them over so that this keyframe starts at frame 40 or whatever. Let me undo that. But then I'd have to go and move this span and the following span and it'd be a pain in the neck. So let me undo. Um, and I want to show you a little trick using F5, okay? If I have my playhead somewhere and if I select a frame inside of a layer, if I hit F5, it's going to add frames to only that layer. So you'll see that I'm sort of pushing this keyframe down out of the way as I hit F5. I'm going to undo all that and bring it back. So that's adding frames to an individual layer. But if I have no frames selected, none of the frames are yellow, and I hit F5, watch what happens closely. Watch this frame here and this frame here and everything as I hit F5 you'll see that it's going to add frames to every layer and I'm pushing everything out of the way evenly, okay? So, let me undo that and go back. What I want to do is make sure that my playhead is somewhere in the span that I want to increase. I don't need to make this tween any longer here. So I just want to sort of push everything from this point in time onward forward down the line to the right. So I'm just going to make sure that I have no frames selected here. I'm going to press F5 and I'm just going to do it until this keyframe here lines up with frame number 40. All right, right now I'm on 41. So I'm just going to go back and by hitting Shift F5, that's going to remove a frame from every layer. So now I have this consistent span of time of 30 frames in between each of those gaps. And don't worry, I'll be showing you how to use this F5 and Shift F5 shortcut a lot throughout the rest of this course. For now, let's just go back to the beginning. I'm gonna hit play and we can watch our animation one last time. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing how we can create multiple animations on multiple elements at the same time. And again, this is just another technique we'll be repeating throughout the course and I know you're gonna get it down. It's gonna be second nature. Normal